to the Australian Space TV. My name's Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with the Australian Space Magazine. We're here in Singapore with the Global Space and Technology Conference run by the SSTL, the Singapore Space and Technology Limited. Lynette Tan, the Chief Executive with the SSTL. We're just talking about acronyms. Yes. Welcome to Australian Space TV. Welcome. Um, thank you for having me here. Very pleasure to be on this uh, program with you. Wonderful. Look, we're proud to be media partners. We have been media partners in the past, but this year we've sort of taken it to a new level uh, and very impressed here with the delegates that you've got, about 800 or so That's plus. Right. Yes, right. Um, now, we've signed a bunch of MOUs today, uh, Poland, Thailand, Australia, UK, uh, and I understand the UK is kind of the lead country yes. partner this year? It's a feature country this year. Got it. Do you do that every year, by the way, like in terms of feature countries? Yes. Well, this is the first year we've had everyone back in Got person yeah. in force. Uh, and we're very uh, happy to have uh, UK as our feature country. Of course, we look forward to having more diverse uh, all, uh, participants from all over the world. It is the Global Space and Technology Convention. So we are looking forward to having other feature countries in years to come. Wonderful. Yeah. Maybe a little bit about SSTL. You've been on our podcast show be right. before with Jane Lowe. Um, but yeah, maybe introduce us to the SSTL, your mm. key sort of priorities. And I understand you're also the founder of Space Faculty. That's right. Uh, so yeah, a, a bit about the SSTL and then we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll dive back into the conference. The Singapore Space and Technology Limited was uh, founded in 2007. Uh, I think there were not many space organizations across Asia Pacific at that time. Uh, the Australian Space Agency was yeah. formed in 2018. Um, so back in the early mm. days, uh, we were one of the pioneering space organizations yeah. and uh, we were quite ahead of our curve in starting a civilian industry uh, you know, nexus of activities to stimulate the growth of the economic uh, sector and to stimulate the growth of the space and technology sector. Uh, we were and, uh, you know, moving away from the old space to the new space 15, 20 years ago, yeah. uh, where in the old space, you know, many... Uh, investments and strategic directions were led by the government. In the new space, you see many commercial players, uh, other you know, organizations outside of the government agencies uh, being innovative with space technologies, being innovative with the solution, and really opening up a world of you know, opportunities to experiment with new ideas, using space as a playground, but using space as the first stop for innovation. Yeah, so definitely focus more on the civil side, right? Hence the structure in That's terms right. of being a limited company. That's right. Uh, the limited company is a statutory requirement by the Singapore government. Miracle. We don't have to go into the ten technicalities. It's not as complex as rocket science, but it's, it's quite near there. <laughs> nice. It would require a separate podcast. Uh, but it is a very uh, autonomous uh, group, um, you know, people who are ahead of its curve, uh, bringing government, industry, you know, academia, and people uh, together to create a very tangible, sustainable development for the space ecosystem, uh, especially across Asia Pacific. Yeah. Now, you must have seen this growth, uh, and I, I don't know the numbers, I don't have them right in front of me, but there's about 800 yes. space companies uh, in Singapore. Yes. Uh, we in Singapore there are about two thousand professionals and researchers yes. employed in the uh, space sector, about fifty to sixty companies. But here in this conference, we have eight hundred delegates from yep. forty over countries on this uh, hot island. Oh, it's a bit rainy, but you know, I think you know, Minister Iswaran said this morning, you could feel the excitement is palpable. Yeah, right. There's a lot of uh, desire for connection, for collaboration, and to take innovation to the next level and that's what we do in SSTL you know we connect the dots uh, we accelerate and harness space technologies for people for enterprises for government and for the planet and so a wide range of uh, downstream applications and applications for space technologies that on first glance to the, the layman could seem very far off and very distant, yep. but actually is quite ubiquitous today. What are some of the highlights this year? I've rattled off a, a bunch of countries there in terms of MOUs. Yes. Uh, maybe just talk us through some of those key ones. Uh, mm -hmm. You've just signed a second one with the UK That's uh, right. government. We're well, on to our third. Uh, we're signing a MOU with the UK, uh, yes. SFTC, for a three-year partnership to enhance a two-way deal flow between the two countries, uh, encourage you know, economic investments and research collaborations between the two countries. We're very excited. We have also signed one with Canberra. Yes. Uh, and in particular, one of the cornerstone of the MOU with Canberra is in youth talent development and diversity. I think this is something the two cities uh, are hold very close to our heart, and I'm very happy to be you know, signatory to 
such an important MOU. Well, you mentioned diversity. You're a chemical engineer by that's trade? That's right. That's yeah, right. okay. <laughs> how did you get into space? Like, what would be some of your um, advice or, yeah. yeah, how did you fall into it or well, you I didn't, I didn't fall it. into it. I think every child had a dream about, you know, being in space, being an astronaut, going to somewhere far. I just clung on to my dreams. Yep. Uh, I'm very happy to say the world is at a stage where space is ubiquitous. It is the first frontier for innovation. And in an age when we're talking about chat GPT and, you know, new ways of handling technology, uh, I think space is now at the forefront of many technological discussions. But from a diversity perspective, what advice would you give? And I suppose, what is the tag between Canberra? What is it with uh, academic research? Research, uh, mm. where, where do you see the sort of the strengths there? Well, Canberra is also focusing its efforts on technology startups, as is Singapore. Yep. So I think we will see significant, uh, you know, exchange of information at least from a technology commercial startup uh, perspective. And certainly, there are investment opportunities uh, in these two cities. And we are also two cities with very renowned institutions, research nice. institutions. So I see many areas for collaboration. Uh, and one distinguishing factor, as far as this MOU is concerned, is a very deliberate uh, effort on youth and diversity and in its uh, talent pipeline development. Do you think there'll be a bit of a swap there between sort of ACT Canberra and getting them up into Singapore and likewise? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we will see, you know, uh, quite a lot of uh, exchanges. In fact, I think there are direct, there were direct flights before COVID. So yeah. there is already a very strong, uh, you know, network, a deal flow and people flow between Canberra and uh, Singapore. The other one with the UK, uh, we're going to be speaking to the UK uh, next up. But what, where, what do you see the highlights there over the next three years? What's something to be mm. looking out for? But well, UK is a very fast-growing uh, emerging space country. Uh, it has about you know US uh, 17 to 20 billion worth of uh, revenue in its uh, space sector. About 25% of that is in hardware upstream application, and 60 to 75% in downstream application. And in the downstream application is where Singapore sees many opportunities in in the exploitation of data, you know, uh, mastering space data to create uh, economic insights, business insights, and certainly to tackle climate change and to find sustainable uh, solutions for our sustainable goals. One of the things I ask a lot of questions, particularly in Australia, of what their sort of key offerings are and what makes Australia unique. What do you think would be an answer from Singapore's perspective? Where do you think mm. your strengths lie? You're a small nation, but you pack a big punch here in the yes, region. Yes. Where do you see your strengths? Well, I think our strength is uh, delivering a, you know, a lot higher value for the size that uh, we represent. And certainly in being able to connect the global ecosystem to the Asia-Pacific ecosystem and connecting the Asia-Pacific ecosystem to the global ecosystem. Nice. Uh, I think there are many developments with the incumbent uh, large developed uh, space-faring nations, but also many opportunities with the emerging economies or uh, you know, emerging countries in space. So I think Singapore plays a very good role in being a neutral platform to facilitate the interactions and it's a beautiful country. People <laughs> love coming here. And I think in this nice uh, landscape, uh, it you know breeds a very collaborative, uh, it breeds an environment that allows for collaboration and for people to, to share and, and want to do things together. I suppose the last one is the almost like the connectivity between space. You mentioned civil space as well. That's right. And maybe some smart nations, uh, digital nations. Do you think that's where, again, Singapore's strengths are? You're covering off Industry 4.0 here. Do you think that's, again, from Singapore's strengths in terms of a, a modern digital country, mm -hmm. connectivity with space uh, yeah. is a natural play for, for, for the country? Uh, I think Singapore has positioned itself in the last uh, five years very strongly as an innovation hub. Yep. And, you know, we can't, uh, it's very hard to run away from space tech and innovation. We talk about quantum and then there's quantum in space. Yep. You know, we talk about blockchain and there's also blockchain in space that really pushes the limits of the developments of blockchain technologies. So I think space is the first plat first uh, node for innovation here and it will be a place, uh, space in Singapore for many innovator innovators to come together uh, to be able to test bit new ideas and solutions. Uh, in particular, you know, you mentioned uh, I'm the founder of Space Faculty. We're also creating a pathway from passion, you know, which is always correlated with space, and profession, and showing them how to turn their passion into a profession 
uh, that is in line with you know, future trends, future technology. And we believe space will be ubiquitous. It will be the, what big data is today. You need to yeah. know what big data is to have a career in STEM or to have a career that is successful. And in space faculty, we are creating that pathway, you know, having a platform where students, learners, professionals, you know, to, from a graduate students all the way to young uh, child, children, six years old, to learn about space and to be excited at the opportunities it can offer and for them to be very conscious in developing a career with space in mind. And you never stop learning, that's what my exactly. professor always said, yes. so the, you need that pathway. Lynette Tan, I could chat to you literally all day. Uh, well done on the conference and well done to the team. Uh, thanks mm. again for hosting us here. But Chief Executive with the Singapore Space uh, and Technology Limited, the SSTL, yes. thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you for having me. Great, thank you. Thank you.